everyone, it's Jen on the go coming at you with another Instacart video. I put out my first Instacart video yesterday um, explaining why I think the shopper rating system is a little brutal and extreme at times and it might have sounded really venti, which it was, but I want to put a disclaimer up here today stating I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to be able to shop with Instacart. It is a great app. There's nothing that out there, out there to me that is perfect. Um, there will always be ups and downs in any job that you would have or any gig or hustle you would have. I used to sell online um, for many years, over 10 years, and that wasn't, that wasn't without flaw either. So I put that video out to explain that customer ratings really can hinder your ability to make more money or not. Um, since I started selling shopping sorry I need to get out of the selling since I started shopping on Instacart in March I have consist consistently made $1,000 every week um, I did take one week off and took a vacation and I didn't even look at the app although I was curious to see what kind of batches would pop up um, but I since then got right back to it even with the, the 4.99 rating I have I'm still able to continue to make my daily goals. So in order for me to make $1,000 a week, I break down that 1,000 into how many days I want a week, it's simple math. So if I wanna make 1,000 a week, I need to make about 150 a day, give or take. Um, if I wanna take Saturday and Sunday off, I need to up that Monday through Friday a little more. But as long as you go out every day and have a goal in mind, then you don't come back until you hit that goal. That's number one, how you're successful. Again, I'm very consistent with the money I make, but I, I treat it like I would a normal profession. Like this is what I need to make, this is what I need to do to make that. Um, I wanna help you with three things that I think help me when I'm shopping in order to secure that five-star rating from the customer. Already, it's out of our control if they're shopping for five, or what, if you're shopping for their items and let's say they don't have five of the items, nor there's not, or there's a replacement for them, that alone could earn me, us, you, a lower than five star, two star, three star. I've never had it happen to me. However, I see that it does happen. I've talked to other Instacarters out there that say, oh my gosh, I got a two star because they were out of organic lettuce. Like, okay, so this we can't control, but what we can do is control how we react with the customer. And I do think at the end of the day, um, before the customer that you've served with stellar customer service, before they hit that two star, three star, even four star, they might just think, you know what, I'm not going to do that. My experience with Jen or Bob or Sue was incredible, so I'm going to give them a five star rating. So these are the things that I believe have helped me to secure that five star because, again, some of this stuff is, again, is, is not in our control and it is not fair, but life's not fair. So we, instead of griping about it, we just have to do something about it. I had a pretty tough day yesterday waking up to that four-star rating that put me at a 4.99, which as a result, my batches were lower amounts driving further distances. And that frustrated me because I do go the extra mile and I do try to do everything right. But at the end of the day, the grapes were smushed. That has to be on me. Nobody else. So... I'm just trying to help you with some pointers. Again, I make $1,000 a week. Great money, great side money. Um, you still have to take your taxes out of that. I'm not an accountant. I'm gonna set that up in a minute with an accountant, but um, the money is real. So I'm not bashing an Instacart. This is in full support of Instacart. I'm thankful, I'm grateful. And I, and I, and I absolutely love the shopping part of Instacart, believe it or not. So here's what I do. When I accept a batch, I immediately drive to the grocery store. I don't sit around and wait and have another cup of coffee. I get busy and I get going. Um, when I'm in the grocery store, the first thing I do when I slide to start shopping, I don't do that till I'm in the store because your time starts when you slide that. So once I'm in the store, I send a quick message right out of the gate and it's the, pretty much the same message every single time and I'm going to give it to you because it works. I've even had people in my feedback say her message was so professional I appreciated it. So already you're setting the tone that you're approachable and you are a professional person on the other side. 
I'm using full sentences, I'm being articulate, I'm just, matter of fact, I need to be treated like a professional and I'm gonna treat your groceries like, like a professional gig too. So what I say is, hi Barb or hi Bob or hi Matt or whoever it is, my name is Jen and I'm your personal shopper this morning, period. I've always put an emoji smile face in. I will do my absolute best to ensure I find every specific item on your list, period. If there are items that are unavailable, comma, I will scan you in replacements for your approval or refund, period. Then I always end with thanks so much and another smiley face. Nine times out of 10, I get a response back and then you've already broken the ice. I think that needs to be done right out of, again, right out of the gate. So you set the tone, right? I'm in charge. This is my client. I need to approach my client. From there, um, my second tip is to go as quickly as you can, but to also be efficient. Um, so, you know, don't be sloppy. Put the, put the groceries in nice in the cart. I try to do that. I, I, I treat the groceries with care so that I don't know. It's, it's just good karma. I just believe that you should do that. I, I do see a lot of people just toss and toss and toss in everything in the cart and the bread's on the bottom. And I want to say, are you kidding? You're smashing their bread. Today I, I did a, a, a shop a shop for potato chips and they were all smashed. And I messaged the customer to say, oh my gosh, I cannot give you this brand of potato chips because they're smushed. And I would not want to eat a smushed potato chip. I'm going to grab you this. Looks great. What do you think? I always ask, what do you think? That's my second my second tip is once you've started that introductory email or the message, now the floodgates are open. So go quickly, look for the groceries. If there's an item that isn't available and you look at their replacement, you can't find the replacement, I ask you, and this is what I do for myself, to think out of the box. A lot of people just refund if they can't find the replacements, but as a consumer and I'm at home and I want a box of angel hair pasta and just because I didn't list you know, or the three that I listed weren't there, I would want somebody to say, hey, but there is this one. So a lot of times I will just not even go what's on the list and like go further than that and find something that works. And again, nine times out of 10, you can find something else that is similar, unless it's like liver or something like that, I don't know. But um, it really works. And don't take too much time on getting hung up on, I can't find the replacement. If, you, if it's not there, it's not there, but just, Use your gut, trust your gut, use your intuition, and grab the next best thing. What would you do if you were making pasta and you had your sauce going and somebody refunded my my spaghetti noodles? I mean, you'd be really upset. So just try to think like the customer and think what would she want? Maybe it's a maybe it's rotini, maybe it's muscatoli, even though they wanted spaghetti. You get my drift. So just communicate, message the whole way through. Another thing I do. When I'm just about done and I have about five items left to grab, by the way, I, own, I always grab the frozen ice creams um, and all the cold goods very last because the customer can see when you're scanning these in. So if they see that you scanned in ice cream 40 minutes ago and it's been 40 minutes and now the potato chips are going in, they're going to think, my ice cream is probably melting. So don't give them anxiety. Do, do for the customer how you want to be done for you. That simple. So before, I, before I'm getting ready to check out, I have about, what, three to five items to get. I'll say, hi, Ann, Bob, Jack, whoever you are. Um, I'm just about done with your shopping. I have a few things to grab. Please let me know right now if there's anything else you'd like me to pick up real quick. Happy to do so, period. Then I'll be on my way. That's it. Usually it's, oh, I'm all good, thanks, or oh, can you grab me? Whatever. So that really helps. Again, you're just humanizing the app because some customers just think it's all robotic and it's not like you are taking time out of your day to do their shopping. So it's kind of nice because if, if you make it personal, that it will be personal. So that really helps with the tip later and with the star rating later. Third, um, I, oh, when I'm checking out too, this is part of number two through the checkout. I always put everything on the belt, how it should be bagged. I don't really rely on the bagger to do my job for me, even though they do, but a lot of times they don't know to put the ice cream, you know, with all the frozen goods. So I just like to be a little bit in control of that because I do believe that the groceries should be bagged beautifully. Um, put your box goods together, your yogurts together, your dairy, your meats, whatever you need to do. But that's very important because it helps, it, it quickens up the other end if you do it on the belt. So I make sure the groceries look nice. And then the last thing I do, 
put the navigation in, drive to the house. Um, and this is very important. I always show up with the groceries and the Instacart insulated bags, the cold goods especially. When you walk in to the step, and a lot of customers aren't there, but a lot of them do, they're kind of creeping through the window and they're checking, they're checking out the situation. You're showing up with one of these, you look professional and they're like, oh my gosh, they put their cold goods in that. That's amazing. I actually had another customer feedback that said, Jen was so great. She came to the door with all of my food securely stored in the cooler bags, which I really appreciated. That was stated in the, in, in, in the comments. And another thing to top that off, so I always show up with my green bags, usually a couple and you can fit. These are pretty big. And these are these keep the cold goods cold. Um, nothing worse than soupy ice cream, right? Oh, and another thing is pizzas wilt like the thin crust pizzas. If you don't have those in here, and they're in the back seat in your hot car, they're like soggy and flimsy by the time they get to the customer. So that's kind of a buzzkill too, right? So just again, just taking little extra steps. So I always show up with a couple of these in toe to toe hands. It looks professional. And they're looking at that saying, oh, wow, this is a legit grocery service. And that's what you want to do. You're representing Instacart's brand. So be their brand ambassador, if you will. So I always have a couple of these. By the way, I did order these from Instacart. And um, they're right on the app. You can get them in the, in the store part of Instacart. And they just take it out of your weekly earnings. So it's no big deal. I know you can get them other places too, but I like the bright green. <clears throat> Again, your branding. And you can, you can tell who these people are when you see the bright green bags. Funny enough, I don't really see a lot of people in the grocery stores with these. So <clears throat> maybe, it, maybe it will make you stand out by having this. Lastly, <clears throat> I show up to every house with my mask on like this. Always, always with my mask on because... Again, customers need to know you're taking this seriously. They don't want you coughing and sneezing and yawning on the groceries. So this just, again, sends another message to the customer. These are all professional touch points, not to mention it's for safety as well. So we have to stay safe. <clears throat> but I've also had customers comment that they appreciate their Instacart shopper showing up to their doorstep with a mask on. It shows respect. So please respect your client. Respect your client. So those are my tips for securing your five-star rating. It doesn't mean you're going to get it because again, if they're out of Doritos or pistachios or whatever, you still could get dinged. But this will help because they'll look at everything else that you did right and maybe they won't, they won't blame the lack of inventory on you. So again, I make $1,000 every week and what I do helps. Just thought I'd share. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below what you do to secure your tip tips because you know, I, I can learn from you as well. I really appreciate that. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, don't give it a thumbs down because I, I don't really care. I don't really care. So just trying to help spread the love of the community. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more tips. Thanks, guys. Bye.